and say park it right here. Looks like they've been raking pretty well. Why is this guy catching? Ah, it's catching on that. Wow. They're both catching. Alright, what is, should I put the GoPro on top of the truck? Yeah, let's do that. Good morning. It isn't even, the sun's not even up yet. And it's Monday morning. Man, I'm excited. So, yeah, we're going to go hit the Sycamore garbage route. Yeah, it's usually a pretty good payday. So today, I have to do it really, really fast. I have to be totally done by 7.30 a.m. So, hopefully we can get it all done. But I went to the store yesterday and found a bunch of metal. So we got to clear out my truck. Um, yeah. And our journey's going to start right now. Okay, it is 6.12 a.m. and I am in my natural environment, hunting on the prowl. I shouldn't say prowl, that's not the right word. I take that back. I'm looking for scrap. <laughs> it looks metal. And it is. Alright, some type of a feeder. Ugh. Stuff in there. Well, it's all going to the scrapyard. Anything else good? Nope. And I see a little box fan. I'll take it. And it's such beautiful weather lately. I can't get enough of it. I see a crutch right away. Hmm. What else is there? Let's go find out. Not quite sure what's here. Looks really nice, actually. But where they're going is going to be much nicer than the landfill dirt hole that it was bound to go. What is that? Glass. But it goes on that shelf thing. Fake flowers. Printer. Pillows. All right. Guess that's it. Ooh, I see a little bit of metal. That's right. Let's go get it. and things. Is that metal? Can't quite tell. Yeah, it's metal. Or aluminum, maybe. Little stool looks... I might grab that. Oh, it's cracked. Bummer. Alright, so I'll grab a cord. That's it. That's aluminum. Oh, it's coming up here with me. This scene, this thing has seen, it's had a good life. Nice long life. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm, is that an extension pole? Or just a rusty... Yeah, it's just a rusty... Mm. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. There's some bugs out already. I thought those guys wanted to sleep in. <laughs> Alright, what do we got going on here? Looks like we got a tank. You know, just in case someone wants that, I think I'm going to leave that alone. Do not cut the cord. Because it doesn't look bad at all. Maybe it's a guinea pig cage. I don't know. I'll take it. I don't know if you guys could hear it, but I'm pulling this out. The cord thumped me on the back of the head really hard. Yeah. Is it? No. I thought those were cords for a second, but they're laces. They're really nice. What are they? Snowshoes or something? Some type of boots? If I was into the resale thing, I'll bet those things would fetch a good penny. But I want to grab them and then not listing them and they'll stick around my place for a long time. Yeah. I just know me. So. What's up, Mr. Lawnmower? Yeah, you need to get in my truck. What's that called? A yard man? Hey, what's up, buddy? A yard man. Yep, well, they took the fuel out of it. That's good. So the garbage man would have taken it and buried it. <laughs> yep. All right, get in my truck. I'm gonna put it sideways so when I go and I stop, it's not rolling back and forth. Because that happens with more force than, than uh, side to side. Piece of something sticking out here. What is this? Part of a chair? Table? Easel? I can't tell. Looks like trash though. This stuff. Yeah. Get off my scrap. And my hands. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was part of a table. Okay. All right. Filling up just nicely. 30 minutes of driving around and. Yeah, there's no that's that's 15 bucks worth of stuff right there. Yep, no doubt about that. I'm wondering, is this guy metal enough to go in the shred? Probably not. I think by weight there's more non-metal than there is metal on this guy. So I'm gonna say no. But I don't know. I think some people would get away with it. I'm. Don't forget. This is always a struggle. Stay. See why they threw it away. The base is broken. 
maybe some screens. I see some metal. Actually, I see there's there's two uh, good trash piles. One right there where those workers are, and this guy. Yeah. All right. So what's going on here? Hmm. Oh, uh, I thought those were light bulbs. Where are they? Salt and pepper shakers. Little mini ones. Alright, I'll pick you up later. Oh, really? Oh, it's a bunch of glass on there. And some cords. Oh, they're for electrical. For, for um, a car. Spark plugs, spark plug wires. Look how loud those tires are. There's a lot of condensation on things. Of this one. Have you read some mornings where words just wasn't coming out properly? Yeah, that's me today. Ugh. Don't spill the dip spit. That stuff just reeks of that dip. Lucky it didn't get any on me. That was nasty. Extra nasty. Yeah. I'm a trash picker germaphobe. Yeah. You know what? Let's take a quick look over here. I think I saw something. Are you okay if I recycle your metal over here in the trash? Sure. Thank you, sir. Oh, looks like a little bit of popcorn or something. What's that? Can I take it? Sure. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah. Not a big garbage man really no, no, and I'll recycle it to to get at the scrapyard. So, all right, thank you. All right, if you notice there, I said, do you mind if I recycle your metal? And it gives the homeowner really clear understanding of what I'm doing, and oftentimes they will give other stuff that we're looking for so it's not just a polite thing even though it, that's primarily what it is it's also an opportunity for the homeowner to say i have some more scrap for you so without me saying hey can i get some scrap do you have any scrap i can have <laughs> you see the difference Filling up nicely. Okay, I'm about I don't know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes into scrapping. And I want to be done, totally done by 7.30. And it's a little bit past 7 right now. I like this cover. That's nice. You know what? Before I start burying these things, 
sure they're not steel. Oh, here, I will. I'm going to leave out the truck pretty quick. This is a well used fire pit. Yep. And this is the way you do it. If you have metal, put it out on the curb and we scrappers will come and get it. That's right. This is heavier than it looks. Hmm. It has broken back window written all over it. Let's not do that. Okay, good stuff. Sit down, sit down. Let me tell you a tale, let me tell you a story. Right now, right now, there's a wandering ghost and she's coming for me. So loud, so loud, she's singing me a song. I'm a mental Mori. This awesome scrap is from my buddy Candace. Yeah. In the morning. Ooh, that does not smell good. All right. Stay. All right. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, so I took the aluminum screens and and put off with my other aluminum. So I picked up a couple shelves um, off camera and a couple little pieces of metal. But yeah, let's go turn this in because I have to be done by 7.30. No time to lose. <laughs> Good old DeKalb iron and metal. Wait, I don't see anything on their scale. There's no numbers at all. What's up with that? Uh oh. Their numbers are broke or something. This is not good. There's no numbers. There's no humans. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. All right, how long do I sit here before I run in there? Hmm. That's not good. All right, hopefully they got my numbers right. <sighs> been raking pretty well but you never know all it takes is one nail I guess right it doesn't happen very often but yeah I've had to repair my um, yeah repair a tire yep 15 bucks at the at the little tire place to get a nail taken out and I mean, I, I could do it myself if I uh, had a compressor, uh, which I do every now and then. Why is this guy catching? Ah, it's catching on that. Wow. They're both catching. All right, what is, should I put the GoPro on top of the truck? Yeah, let's do that.
this. I guess it's 25 bucks. Yeah. Huh, what what's wrong with their indicator? Hmm. All right. Man. It's a little windy right here. Or is it less windy right there? So at 360 pounds, um, and I took the aluminum off, so it's probably a dollar or two in aluminum for $24.30. So I was, um, so it's well before eight o'clock. I didn't quite hit my mark of 730. Um, but yeah, because I have some uh, some step work to do. Work in the 12 steps of recovery. So I'm going to do my step work today. That's, uh, that's top priority. And uh, yeah, because being in recovery, uh, it allows everything else to happen. So in, in my world, it should be God first, recovery second, and then everything else takes a number after that. So, and that's working well in my life. It definitely is working well in, in the pursuit of happiness. You know. And I am a follower of Jesus Christ, and I'm in the process of recovery. Now, you notice that I didn't say, hi, I'm Paul, and I'm an alcoholic. I didn't say, Paul, I'm a drug addict. Because that's not who I identify with. And none of us should identify with, I am an alcoholic. I am that. There's a place for that in the groups of Alcoholics Anonymous and in Narcotics Anonymous and those other type of groups because a lot of times we look at that very first step, which we're going to go through here in a second, and we're like, you know, I need to be powerless. I need to, to have God to be my, my savior. I need to have God as the one that I look to. And so we say that I am an alcoholic so that I realize that I have a problem, that I need a savior. And it says... Those of us in the process of recovery, those of us that are actively saying, you know what, I am trying to be in recovery. Here's what we know, that we are powerless without God. I am going to drink. I am going to use drugs. I need God to help. I need God to intervene. Here's some scriptures that back that up. It says, blessed are those who know they are spiritually poor. I don't have everything that it takes. I need, I need God. That's in Matthew uh, 5, 3. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Why am I mourning? Because I'm spiritually poor. I don't have the right to Jesus, and this is really tough. That's why I'm mourning. The next one is that we believe God and we're committed to him. Do you believe God? That's a real question. Do you believe God? Those of us in recovery, we believe God and we're committed to him in all of our mess, and not doing it right. We still believe them and we're committed. There's some scripture to back that up. Blessed are the meek. I don't have it. I'm, I'm actually really small, God, and I need your help. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4.10. So I humble myself as a man at the age of 39 going into a homeless shelter? Wait a minute. I'm a man. I'm not going to go in a homeless shelter. No. Humble yourselves, and God will restore you. God restored me. That, that's, that's happened to me. That happens thousands of times the world over every single day. Let's look at the next one. We confess our faults to one another. In the corporate world, you don't want to announce your mistakes. If you mess something up, mum's the word. But in our spiritual world, in recovery, we confess our faults to one another. And we are open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at a couple of scriptures here. Blessed are the pure in heart. I need to be honest with you, man. Let's have a talk. I've been, I've been thinking all kinds of crooked. Let me, let me let this stuff out. Okay? It says that blessed are the pure in heart. 
Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be, what? Healed. Wait a minute. God, you're telling me that if I confess my sins and we pray for each other, that we can be healed? We can actually have these issues that I was talking about? Press that button and they're gone? That kind of healed? Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about here. That's in James 5.16. Let's look at this next one. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Wait a minute, God. You're saying that if I confess and I do... If I do what you're commanding, you're going to purify me? If you just drink purified water, it's a lot better than tap water or water from the lake or the ocean. Yeah, he's going to purify us. And that's in 1 John. All right, two more and then I am done. That we seek forgiveness and we forgive others. Now, some people have hurt us. Some people have hurt us a lot. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not your fault. A lot of people have done harm to us. It wasn't your fault, them doing harm to you. Okay? It was, there's some pain involved in that. that, that that's not what I'm talking about here. Though. I'm talking about when someone messes up, are we going to be super harsh with that person and deal with them harshly? Or are we going to forgive them? Well, I think we need to be forgiven them because it says that um, blessed are the peacemakers in Matthew 5 3. It also says, let, let us examine our ways and test them. Let us return to the Lord in Lamentations. 340. And let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. It says, get rid of all bitterness. Has anybody in here been bitter and just really irritated at life situations and people? God's asking us to get rid of all bitterness, all rage, get rid of anger and brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Who here can get angry really easy? I certainly can. And I'll, I'll admit it. You know, when I get some road rage every now and then. You know, I get pretty bent out of shape. The Holy Spirit said, Paul, that's actually a lady in the church. In there. <laughs> that's, that's happened before. So I need, to, I need to mellow out. Okay. And the last one here is that those of us that are in recovery, we pray to follow God's will and to help others. What is God's will? God cares about us. He wants us to help each other out. So when I'm talking to a friend out there in our, our cafe time, that's what God wants us to do. When we're making a phone call to someone that you know that they're struggling, when, when we're struggling, we get that weird phone call out of nowhere in the midst of us struggling. That's what God wants us to do. So those of us in recovery, that we pray and we follow God's will. Let's look at some scriptures that, that back that up. Blessed are those whose greatest, greatest desire is to do what God requires. Ooh. Blessed are those whose greatest desire. Is your desire right now is to do what God requires? Is my desire, is that the greatest thing in my life? I'm still working on it. Okay. Now listen to the next one. Blessed are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. Who here is, has tried to do what God wants us to do, and we get some flack for it? We get talked to. We're like, yeah, you're getting kind of weird there, Paul. Jesus freak. <laughs> that happens. And you know what? I feel bad about that. You know, I feel weird. But you know what? I'm not going to be denying Jesus because I was doing the right thing. The Holy Spirit talking to us. So and that's in, uh, in Matthew 5.10. And so let's look at these last two ones. This is one that really applies to me. So, Paul, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10.12. So, Paul, you think you got it all going down. You throw all that. Care if you don't fall. So I need to be I need to be aware of that. And the last one here, which is Colossians 3.16, so let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So I need to have the word of Christ dwelling in me richly. Father in heaven, thank you so much for bringing us all together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for, for us to be able to follow you. Lord, and thank you for the Holy Spirit, because in your word, God, that your Son ascended to heaven so that you can send the Holy Spirit into us to teach us all things. Lord, your amazing Holy Spirit, we love you. Speak to us loudly. Father God, thank you for all this.